Hi guys, so I wanted to jump on here and do a video because no one's home right now and uh, hubby will probably come home later, but he understands when I film. <laughs> so, um, okay. <sighs> what a morning. It was a crazy morning. I cut myself shaving this morning and I am a big baby because I am... Well, this is so just an excuse, but um, I'm a Pisces sun and a Cancer moon, so I'm a crybaby, right? Like super sensitive, crybaby, water sign, all of that. So that was a fiasco. Um, second part is I don't do well with blood. Um, I don't do well with seeing blood, my own blood. If it's not even hurting, but I see the blood, I still freak out and cry because I feel like it's like worse than what it really is so that was an adventure um so anyways that was this morning <laughs> but what I really wanted to do was I wanted to get on here and um share with you guys my experience so last night I started the um I don't even have it it's in my journal I started um a course for shadow work so um the house of swords tarot joe she is doing a well she's going to be doing a master master class today it's a free class where you could sign up so if you go to her instagram page um house of swords tarot you will find a link where you can sign up for her master class i think she's still taking signups but i'm not sure so by the time you see this video it might be too late but anyways she's doing a free class all about shadow work and then eventually when she feel, feels ready she's gonna put up a course for identifying your shadow and going through the process of healing so Joe reached out to me and asked if I would like to participate in basically like a beta version of her course and so I said yes, and I am taking her course right now. Um, I'm just going through all of the experiences so that I could give her my own personal testimony and my whole personal review of um, my experience with her course. So I have to say this, let this be, I'll send this video to her too, by the way. So Joe, this is for you. This is like part one of probably a gigantic um, testimonial that I'll be giving you. <laughs> but I just finished um, the second part of the course and I had the craziest like craziest awakening dream I don't even know what you want to call it so um the first part of the course is identifying your shadow so you have to pick and I'm sure we all have more than one I know I do but you have to pick which area of your life what shadow you want to dissect which one do you want to heal from so some of mine are include um my negative um my negative or uncomfortable feelings with money that was one of them um i have a shadow with my eating habits so emotional eating is another one and then i have the huge one which is my relationship with my family specifically my father um and so i was like you know what i'm gonna go for the big one <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go for the big one and actually there's other like other little shadows that are kind of connected to the father energy which are like my um, my experiences with past lovers and you know being promiscuous so but that kind of stems with it's like it kind of branches off with the main one and the main one is my relationship with my father as well as like my parents so I was like I'm gonna do that one I'm going to just go big and do it. <laughs> so the first part of this course was I had to write. You have to literally write down everything that comes to mind when you are talking about or thinking about this experience, this particular person or this experience that you went through. But you got to dive, dive deep, very, like as, as deep as you can go, which is like the very first memory you have of this experience or of this person. So I was really like going down into like childhood stuff and I'm not going to share with you guys like what came up because it's very personal um, and it's a little too personal. So um, I dove deep, right? So I was writing everything down. I mean, Joe was basically saying like treat it as like automatic writing or treat it as like a journal entry. So I'm writing all this stuff down. I had about three pages. I'm not kidding you. <laughs> three pages full of just 
memories and feelings and emotions that came up. And then it was like, I was doing bullet points of all of these experiences. And then within the bullet points, I was doing additional bullet points of like, well, this is what this brought up for that experience, or this is maybe this. And then I was starting to make connections. I was like, well, maybe that's why I feel this way. Or maybe that's why I do this now. And this is why I seek this. And it's like, it was crazy. So I was having like those experiences simply based off, based from just writing down everything. And of course I cried because I don't think you, anyone can get through a shadow work process without crying and you're gonna have to probably do it more than one time i know for me if i were to sit down and really dive in deep again i would probably pick up more stuff that i didn't write and the thing is that the trick with this is is it's a lot of stuff that you probably haven't verbalized to anyone or something you haven't verbalized out loud in a long time um so there was a lot of stuff that was coming up that they were like memories for me or even just emotions that I've only verbalized to my therapist and I have never verbalized to anyone else um, not even my husband and it was hard it was hard to go through that but it was also fucking liberating and when I say liberating I mean it was liberating it was so freeing and so the second part of this this course Joe basically said when you are going through this experience it is not to hurt yourself you are not going through these memories to relive it to live in it to be stuck in it again to live in your past you were going through these to dig it all up so you're like imagining yourselves digging up the roots because you're going to replant new seeds and so Joe was saying that the emotions that you should be feeling through the process, cry, cry, let it out. But then after the process of pulling all the roots up and really getting into like the literally the core of what it is, the feeling that you should have after the fact should be a sense of liberation freedom, a weight lifted off your shoulders. And that is exactly what I was experiencing. And exactly as I said that it was 717 on this, <laughs> on this video and seven is a prime number right now during this experience. So awesome. So anyways, um, so I had that liberating feeling. So I knew, okay, I got pretty much most of it because Joe was saying, um, in part two that if there's like stuff left over that you still haven't tapped into, there's things that you still haven't brought up, you're still going to be feeling more of living in the moment or living in the past versus feeling liberated and feeling free. So that was my experience. That was part two. Um, the other part of part two is you have to go through the process of forgiveness and the process of reframing the whole situation. So um, I still haven't done that yet. I am actually, I feel like the dream that I had, which is what I'm going to share with you next. Um, the process of forgiveness is you have to forgive the situation, the people involved, everything. The power of forgiveness is strong and it's it's so liberating, but it's also fucking hard because it is not easy to forgive people who hurt you in your past. It is not easy to forgive people um, or situations or things or objects that hurt you and that left a huge like fucking scar in you, within you. Um, it's not easy to forgive, but forgiveness sets you free. Um, and it doesn't mean that you are saying, I'm okay with what you did with, for, to me or I'm okay with that experience. It's it's basically you're saying, you fucking hurt me, but I'm forgiving you because I need to set myself free from this. I can no longer hold this weight. I can no longer carry this baggage. You're setting yourself free. It's it, You're doing it for you. And that's powerful. So that's the process that I'm gonna be working on this week. Um, and then the process of reframing or replanting. I, I'm, I'm thinking of it as I'm going to replant seeds. I'm going to give myself the opportunity to re-examine my experience and see it from a different set of eyes, my grown-up eyes. I had those experiences from a young girl. I was little. I was a teenager at one point. And I need to get myself out of that state of mind and into Rose, a 30-something-year-old woman, Rose, who has a whole different perspective of life. And that is the new seeds I'm going to plant. Because I want to get out of this whole like, 
living and thinking I have to seek approval in a certain way when I don't. And it's literally setting myself free and it's setting my soul free and it's setting me on fire and like a phoenix rising up from the ashes. So it's a beautiful experience. It's rough. I'm not lying. Like <laughs> it is not easy to go through the past like that. But it is so helpful. So that's where I'm at. So then that was last night when I had all of those like emotions and I was writing everything down right so then I go to sleep and I have this dream and I woke up and I can vividly remember the dream and that is how I know it was a specific dream to remember I don't remember all of my dreams um, which is a bummer because sometimes you, you receive messages in your dreams this one I remember and I know it's specific because it was a new guide that came forward so in the dream, I was running away from somebody or something. And this is often a dream I have. Um, and as, I was, as I'm reading The Women Who Run With Wolves, that book is fucking amazing too. Um, it mentions the dark man. And the dark man is usually symbolic for a specific person or a thing or an emotion or a trauma that we as women experience at one point in our life. And most of us experience it at a young age to our teens and this is something that will often haunt us further on in our life because of lack of healing and getting rid of it um and so often in my dreams i will have dreams of running away from the dark man um this thing or an emotion or whatever i'm usually being chased and i can't get out or i'm usually um hurt like it's hurting me and I often die in my dream I will die from this person or whatever there was times where I actually turned the person around and I saw their face and it was myself that was crazy <laughs> but it's always a very morbid dream either I am murdering or it's murdering me um, but I always die from it, right? So I'm having that dream, which is turning into a nightmare. And I remember in the dream, there was a lot of red. I was seeing a lot of red. And, um, and I was trying to get away. And then all of a sudden, there was this giant white wolf in front of me. And I looked up at the wolf. I was like crawling, right? I was like on my belly. And I looked up at the wolf. And I put my hand up towards the wolf's face. And he bit my hand. He grabbed my hand with his mouth. He bit my hand and he dragged me and he took me away. He was literally dragging me, but it didn't hurt. It was just like, he's taking me away. He's, he's helping me. So this wolf is dragging me to this, to my house. And it was um, one of the houses that I lived at as a child growing up. And um, the wolf was knocking on the door and the door opened a couple seconds later and it was my sister who answered. I think it was my sister because now that I look back on it, it was like it could have been my sister, but it also could have been me as a child because me and my sister looked exactly the same <laughs> growing up. Um, but anyway, it, I'm going to take it as my sister because I feel like that was like my first feeling when I saw her. Um, but it was her in child form and she opened the door and let me in and we literally went into the living room to watch TV like it was nothing like as if I wasn't just being chased and almost murdered in my dream right so we just go back to just watching TV simple it was like I was being saved like this wolf took me out of this situation and it was the craziest dream because one it's like this animal this guide appears to me, but I'm instead of being murdered and killed and hurt, I was saved. They took me away from the situation and they brought me back to a childhood like sense of purity where it's like there was no harm after we closed the door. We were just watching TV simple and powerful at the same time and it was like what <laughs> so as soon as I had that dream I woke up and I was like I need to remember this so I wrote a little thing about it on um on my Instagram story so I could come back to it later to remember and it's still vivid and it's like it was a white wolf it was a wolf um and it's funny that it was a wolf because I'm reading women who run wild with wolves for the book club that I'm doing that I'm hosting on my Facebook group so that's cool but also I was reading up on like what spirit animals like what wolves mean what do they stand for and one of the main things that they stand for is seeking freedom seeking freedom and power owning your own power that kind of thing 
So it was just like, ah, it was like, it was just cool. It was like that connection was made and it was, it was a powerful dream to have after this whole experience of shadow work. So I wanted to get on here and share that with you guys. Um, that's basically all I wanted to share. Thank you guys for watching and listening. I'm going to go ahead and go before hubby gets home. But I just wanted you guys to hear about that. Just comment below. I want to know, like share with me. Do you have any experiences with your own personal shadow work? Have you done shadow work before? What are your experiences with it? Um, have you ever seen your animal guide appear to you in a dream? Um, I've had multiple dreams with whales, which are my number one guides, but never a wolf. This was completely new. I have like a piece of flake. <laughs> never a wolf that was completely new. This is a full blown new guide that just has appeared. And I feel like he's here for the process of healing in self, um, as I dive into shadow work. So powerful stuff. So anyways, you guys, I am going to go. Thank you guys for listening and I will talk to you soon. Bye my loves.